In this lesson, I'm going to start talking about multi-body parts. Multi-body parts are not really related to assemblies, but a lot of people use them as replacement for assemblies or use techniques that involve multi-body parts in place of assembly techniques from time to time. There are some advantages and disadvantages to using multi-body parts, and we'll explore all of that during these next several lessons. Multi-body parts can be used in a number of different ways, but in this particular assembly with the motorcycle, the biggest use of multi-body parts came with the chain. This is not typically what you'd think of as a multi-body part, but let's open it and examine why it was done this way. First of all, chains have historically been a challenging bit of assembly for SolidWorks to create. Every now and then someone will come along with a new video showing another technique of creating mates, creating chains, or animating chains. But these simple mechanical items have stymied the CAD industry in the same way that flexible components, such as the spring and the wishbone in the fork, have stymied SolidWorks. If you were to create a chain as an assembly, it would be a lot of mates, and getting it to move around would be even more mates. And while there are people who have done it, it turns out to be more brute force than ingenuity. The chain I've created for this assembly is not a chain that can be used for motion, although under some circumstances it could be used for that purpose. I built it this way because it was the simplest way to put it together. You see from the feature manager that it doesn't require an inordinate number of features. But let's go through how I accomplished it and why it had to be done this way. I started out just modeling a single link. And let's roll back, click on a feature, and click the rollback. So I got the shape of the link with a sketch. And the sketch was created on the midplane while I used the offset option to establish the width of the chain. From there, I created two of the rollers. This is easy enough. This is modeling you should be able to do by now. The edge around the chain is filleted because there are few parts that truly have sharp edges. Plus, if you're going to try to do something visual with a part, such as all of the graphics involved in this tutorial lesson, taking the sharp edges off of things really goes a long way to make parts look better and more realistic. On top of that fillet, there was a chamfer added to the ends of the rollers. And then I mirrored the entire body to create a single outside link. Now I still needed an inside link, but at least I've got this outside link ready to go. And I created a sketch, or rather copied this sketch from the assembly. And I wanted to put a little bit of sag in here to make it look more realistic. Any real chain, unless it's extremely tight, does not have a straight line return on the bottom. This depends, of course, on how the chain is being used. There could be a sag on the top, or in some cases, there could be sag on both top and bottom. SolidWorks assemblies do not have the ability that SolidWorks parts have to make a curve-driven pattern. If I flip back to the motorcycle assembly, within this assembly, if you insert component pattern, you do not have the option to make a curve-driven pattern. The closest thing is a feature-driven pattern, so you would have to make a feature with a curve-driven pattern and then use that to drive a component pattern. But that seems crazy and more work than I really needed to do. So flipping back to the part, again with Control-Tab, the only way to achieve a pattern was to use the curve-driven pattern in part mode. The alternative, of course, was to make a couple hundred links and mate all of the parts up which would have taken probably a couple of hours instead of 15 minutes. So the next feature here is the curve-driven pattern, and this is probably the most interesting feature in this part. Let's edit it and see how it works. The pattern direction, in this case, is the sketch. And so the sketch was selected, and the sketch had to be tweaked in order to get the right distance and the correct spacing for the chain. Each link with an inner and an outer link is an inch and a half from end to end. 
and getting the spacing to work out just right was much the same as putting a real chain on a motorcycle. You have to wrap it around and then take out a few links and then reposition the rear wheel to make sure that it fits the chain. The curve method used was just the offset curve because the original link was put right on the curve itself. And the alignment method was tangent to curve so that each new link was always right on the curve. All that remained once this part was figured out was to create another link. And in this time, I did it as a separate body. So we've got multi-body parts going on on two levels here. First of all, the curve-driven pattern, if you notice, uses the body to pattern option. And all of the resulting pattern instances are solid bodies. If you look at the solid bodies folder, We've got 46 bodies, including the original. So this link to part was modeled as a separate part. If we right click on this, we can edit in context. That goes back to the original part. This could have been modeled in the same part as the original link, but I just chose to do it this way. So going back to the main chain part, I'll hit control tab and the part was inserted using the insert part command. And then I found the link, link two, and inserted that part into the already multi-body part. When you insert a part into a new one, you have the option to add all the solid bodies, surface bodies, axes, planes, cosmetic threads, absorbed sketches, unabsorbed sketches, custom properties, coordinate systems, model dimensions, and whole wizard data. All that we really needed in this case was the solid bodies and possibly the planes to help get the link lined up and centered. This places the new part inside the existing part, but it doesn't place it in the correct location. So I used a secondary feature, which is the move copy body, which you can find at insert features, move copy. And the move copy body feature has two different ways of functioning. It first has a method for translating and rotating bodies where you enter in specific amounts to move or rotate the particular body. And then it also has mate settings. Making the argument that multi-body parts are not assemblies can be difficult when you're using mates to position those bodies. So in this case, it was much easier to use mates to locate the part rather than keying in a specific amount to move and then to rotate this new link. The two mates used, of course, were a concentric for one end and a coincident for the other. And then, of course, the last feature is another curve-driven pattern that patterns the second link around the rest of the chain. And getting these last two links lined up, they're not quite perfect, but very close. And as we say, close enough for this assembly. So the chain will not move in the context of the assembly, but it could be animated using Animator. If you were to push the link around the path, then SolidWorks would rebuild the chain in each new position. And really what it would be doing would be rebuilding the two curve patterns. So this is a multi-body part with 90 bodies in the end. And using this as a multi-body part is really a workaround for the fact that mechanical CAD programs are still not very good at a couple of things. Chains is definitely one of them, as well as flexible parts.